Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. First of all, I wanna say I'm sorry that it's been a couple months since I've posted on here, but it's worth it and I'll prove it. Because not only did I figure out how to get 160 million views on one single video, I also figured out how to monetize it without selling a single product, running any ads, or any cringy offers that tarnished my reputation. So, do you wanna learn how I did it? Let's dive right in. Now for this video, I'm gonna dive in specifically specifically to short form content, because let's be honest, by the looks of my YouTube channel, I really haven't figured out this long form thing yet. But short form, I got you. So take a seat, buckle up, and let me show you how I got so many views. Step number one for a viral video is to create an engaging hook. And I know you guys have heard this a million times, and to be honest, I had too, but I really didn't understand what people meant. And not only that, but what I thought was an engaging hook wasn't actually an engaging hook. So let let me show you guys what I mean. An engaging hook is something that keeps people from scrolling. And there's a lot of different types of engaging hooks, but the one that I found that works the absolute best is to create some sort of visual that makes people do a double take. Like, did I really just see what I thought I just saw? For instance, toilet paper tied to a fan. If you wanna grab people's attention, and I mean really grab their attention, you need to create a visual hook that makes people go, wait, did I just really see what I think I just saw? By tying toilet paper to my fan and immediately going to turn the fan on, people are waiting to watch what happens when it spins and then watch what I'm gonna do with this project. I actually had several ideas when I went to make this video about how to make it go viral, but the one that made the most sense was to get right into the action. I thought about tying the toilet paper and showing me tying it and putting it onto the fan. I thought about showing the fan already spinning, but what caught people's attention was the fact that I was in the process, the set was already set, and I was in the process of really going and making this toilet paper start to turn, which was an immediate gratification for the viewer where they could actually see the result of what was about to happen right before their eyes. Another example of this is people who will take a drill to something that is perfectly fine and you will see them do a home DIY project. For instance, if I were to start drilling into this Powerade bottle, you would wonder, what is she doing? You're basically doing something that visually people just don't understand unless they watch further. I also added text to the screen that said, point of view, things I do when my hubby isn't home, which if someone wasn't captured by the visual of toilet paper being tied to a fan, they can also relate or a large audience of people can relate to being bored at home alone. So making sure you leave room to add text on the screen for those silent scrolls rollers is really essential. Now you need to build the hype for the end result. So you've hooked them in by showing them something visually that made them do a double take. You've added text on the screen that helps them relate to you. But now you wanna make sure that what you're doing on the screen is interesting enough to keep them from scrolling away because you want them to be invested in the story and the end result. So in this video, you see that I dive underneath the twirling toilet paper multiple times to try and achieve the goal of ultimately standing up in the center of it. And you know what's funny? I actually recorded this video where I did it perfect on the first try. But while I was creating the video, I was thinking to myself, I can't get it on the first try. I need to leave the viewer wondering if I'm going to get there. So we build intensity and make people invested into this story. Will she stand up in the middle of the toilet paper funnel or not? So I dove under the toilet paper tunnel at least four, maybe five times in order to achieve the end result. But that's actually not enough either, because although people are sitting there waiting to see if I stand up in the center, we need to add more to keep the viewer interested. That's why you see me zooming into the camera, zooming into my face, zooming into the spot and back out, into my dog and back out. We're zooming in using different camera angles every couple seconds to keep people visually stimulated and engaged. It's like a casino. You need lights, camera, and flashing everywhere to keep people's attention online because their attention span is so freaking short. So let's recap. Step one, you need a visual hook. Step two, you need text on the screen that appeals to a large amount of people. Step three, you need to create intensity. You can't give an instant result right away. You have to build up the hype by not giving them exactly what they want to see in the beginning of the video. Step number four is after you create that longer storyline, you also need to do some zoom ins and maybe some angles 
multiple swaps to keep people's attention. Now moving on to step number five, which is the most important step, is that making sure the end result is actually satisfying and shareable. Because although you might hook in the first person that views your video, they're not gonna share it with the next person unless you give them an actual satisfactory result. And the very last step to all of this is making sure that after your video is posted, you do the proper SEO. So if you wanna learn how to do SEO, I will link that video down below for you guys so that you know exactly what to do on TikTok. But this is truly how I gained over 100 million views. And I've used this structure multiple times and it pretty much works every time. Now, when it comes to monetization, you wanna make sure that your video on TikTok is at least one minute long. If it's not one minute long, then unfortunately, you're not gonna get paid out for that video. However, there is a workaround to this. If you can't figure out how to stretch your video all the way to a minute, you can actually upload this to YouTube Shorts, Facebook, Instagram, and even Twitter to gain those monetary results. For me, I ended up making almost $4,000 by uploading the exact same video to YouTube Shorts. Just make sure that when you download your video, it does not have the TikTok watermark on it. You can use websites like SnapTick or SSS Tick, which I also linked down below for you. Either way, I hope this really, really short crash course helped, but if you do need more help, let me know in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to give you more advice. And stay tuned for the next video because if you're not the type of person that likes doing crazy in-home pranks or tying toilet paper to a fan, if you're more the type of person that likes to just sit and talk, I also have a strategy for going viral on talking videos. So stay tuned for next time and thanks for watching. Bye.